And I think that that's probably key is looking at your organization and, and sh shining a light on the people that are already exhibiting these leadership qualities. And even if just a little bit, mm -hmm. again, those leadership qualities that are innate, being able to develop upon those to become great leaders within your organization. And quite frankly, it worked out so well with Wendy because she was an, an insanely high producer. But there could be someone that's like fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, like maybe in the top 50%, top 25% more than likely, but it doesn't have to be the top producer. Yep. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and today we have special guest... Wendy Dieterlin. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Oh. Joseph, you look so different. <laughs> Your little hair. We have the pleasure of having a special guest today, and that's Wendy Dieterlin. Uh Wendy has been one of my best, best friends uh, for almost 10 years now. Uh, it's come back a long time, and we've been able to work together for the last four. Um, and I've talked in previous episodes about this idea of, yeah, it's great to have people that you can call when things are going bad or people that will support you, things like that. But it's also so important to have those people in your life that you can call and celebrate with. That you can call and say, hey, I've been working this long on this deal and it just closed and the commission came in and, and the person on the other line is not like, oh, good for you. Like, genuinely like, happy. Like, great, <laughs> awesome, another win. But it's genuinely happy for you and celebrates with you and you can do that for the other. And and that's one, Wendy's been one of those people for me and um, there's years where we were running and gunning together and competing every day, but like this healthiest competition possible. Um, so, so fortunate to have her in my life. And, and I want to really have her on this episode to unpack uh, a topic that I think is so important in sales. And this is technically a sales podcast. I know we talk about everything, but, but it, it is created as a sales podcast. And one of the most interesting dynamics in sales is when someone goes into sales and does a great job, excels in their career, and then it seems like a logical progression for them to become a sales leader or a sales, even worse term, manager. And that doesn't always work out. Yeah. And so I think it's, it's perfect timing as Wendy has taken some leadership role within our organization and is having to balance both of them and really looking at her personality and the things that make her a great leader, not just a great salesperson. And I think that may be the basis of this discussion is that you need to evaluate the, whether the person is a great leader and not just a great salesperson. Uh, but give us just kind of your initial thoughts on that process as a whole in the beginning, like the traditional, like, hey, Cindy's killing it in sales this year. Let's, let's have her go manage 12 people and how that typically doesn't work out. Yeah, I think a lot of organizations, it feels like it's just the natural progression yeah. uh, when somebody sure. comes in. If you go crush it, you go top, become the top salesperson, you're going to become in, or move into a management position. Yeah. And the reality is, more often than not, that person's not a good fit for, for a manager sure. position. Um, and I think that the, the easiest way to look at it, you're a stud producer, you're the number one producer, star shines on their own, yep. right? Yeah. And to move into the leadership position or sales management position, you have to understand the importance of helping others shine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's not so easy yeah. uh, when true. you're a top producer. Sometimes it's actually incredibly hard because yep. you're used to that spotlight uh, being on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and another thing is the reason why this is so important, the reason why you really need to pay attention, especially if you're in a leadership role within your organization, is because think of the downside. The downside risk potential is taking someone that is excelling where they're at, that is producing at a high level, taking them out of that role and then putting them into a management or leadership position, when that fails, you're not only failing in the people that they're managing not performing as well as they should, but you're also taking away that production. Yeah. So it's like it's a double loss, which can be detrimental in, in a major way for, mo for most organizations. It's detrimental to the organization, but you also just took um, the, the, the really strong attributes of that salesperson and, and took it away from them. Yeah. So you lose, um, potentially you lose their, their um, 
confidence yeah. in the oh, organization. Yeah. So it negatively can impact the organization as well as that individual because it's hard to transition back. And I think sometimes there's um, a stigma that goes you know, with kind of the lifetime sales position. Yeah, and sure. there shouldn't be. Mm. I mean, some people are just hardwired. That's what they're yeah. incredibly good at. Doesn't mean they're going to be good, as we said, in the leadership mm. or in the manager position, but there's nothing wrong with that. And I think it's, it's, it's really about figuring out um, if, if that skill set's there. And yeah. we, you talk so much about people focusing on things they're not good at and trying yeah. to become good at instead mm. of taking what, what you know, we, we talk about these profiles yep. that, that we look at for our organization. And what we should be doing is looking what we're, how we're hardwired, what we're yep. good at, and, and building on those strengths, not trying to become someone that, that you're not really. 100%. And in... And- the goal of any great leader is to put their people in a place to succeed. And what you're doing is if you're not digging deep into these personality profiles and into really getting to know these people on a insanely high level is you're risking putting them in a position where they won't succeed. Mm -hmm. And some people don't come back from that. Like, Mm -hmm. like you end up losing those people forever. Um, just because you simply put them in the wrong seat on the bus and that's the last thing you want to do. And so we've taken that extremely seriously, uh, within our organization and we have an organization that we go through that has these personality profiles and then we go through them in depth with the person and get them to better understand themselves. Uh, to me, it's the best form of self-awareness is to be able to read yourself like, like an autobiography uh, almost and to understand what those things mean. Uh, maybe is the most important. Like what's the practical application of all this stuff that I'm reading about resilience and industrialness and and these things that, you know, just sound good, but like, what does that mean today? Like what's the ideal work environment for me to be on? What's the worst work environment to be in? What's the best way to communicate with me? What's the worst way to communicate with me? And then the flip side of that. And so we identify people as leaders through their innate attributes that are born in them. Just, yeah, your DNA. Yeah, it really is. And and that, to me, takes all the emotions out of it. It takes all the political correctness of, well, it's time, you know, they've paid their dues yep. and it's time for them to move up the ladder. No, like if, if we identify that this person to fit that role has to have this, this, and this, if they don't have this, this, and this, unless there's some crazy outlier that's, right. um, that's just glaring, then they're just not a good fit. Uh, and, and I think a second part of that is we look at what are they doing outside of just producing? And so when we look at, you know, agents of ours that are out in the field, it's not just, you know, Cindy is writing more policies than everybody. It's no, well, what is she doing in communicating with other people? Is she um, a servant with her time? Is she helping others? Is she, um, you know, coming up with new and fresh ideas for the home office? Is she, um, you know, exhibiting leadership qualities at the, at the end of the day, if you want someone to become a leader, are they a leader already? Yep. Leaders are going to be leaders wherever you put them. And I think it's it's uh, it sounds simple to identify them, but it's not always. Uh, and I think it's an important part of the process. So maybe talk about just a couple of those things with your own personality um, that you found that that puts you in a good position uh, to be a leader. Um, you know, when you look at my my disc profile um, or the, the mm-hmm. personality profiles that we use, I think I kind of fit the personality for for what we you know, we talk about as a sales wolf, yep. you know, yep. by definition. Um, but I think when you, you look at, I don't really even think it's, it's outlier stuff for yeah. me. I, I really think that my profile and, and I, I so firmly believe in, in when you look at those things, the, the inability to change who mm-hmm. we are. We, and we, we've talked about as leadership, you know, some of it is development. Personal, sure. I mean, personal development certainly can make a leader, a better leader. Exactly. But innately, some of that stuff is there. I think. I think it's you know nature mm-hmm. nurture. There's a little bit of both. Um, and so in my in my case, you know it's it's always been it's always felt natural to me. Yeah. Um, you know we always go back. I, I'm notorious for going back to being an athlete. Yep. And you know a lot of that uh, was pulled out of me as an athlete mm-hmm. and being uh, an athlete in a team sport. Yeah. Uh, was you know a huge part of that for me. So. Um, you know, over the years, I've been able to to develop um, some of those some of those skill sets. 
Um, but I think ultimately, um, you know, the desire to, to, to help other people shine and grow yeah. is there. And, and that is probably along with it, the innate skill set that I have is, is, you know, the biggest thing in, in transitioning. If you don't have that desire to help, if, if, if it has to be about you being in that number one spot, mm. you know, being the star, yeah. uh, I think it's really difficult to, to move into that, that different position because mm. it, it, it changes the, um, it, it, it's a, it's a different feel, yeah. you know, to not be in that top one or two spots. And sure. if that's what's most important to you and you don't care as much about the development of others, um, it's a difficult transition. Yeah. Um, you it's know. difficult for me uh, going through that. Like yeah. me coming out of the field was a difficult, like I did not want to do it because I felt like the only way I could lead was by example. Yeah. And I felt like, how can I tell someone to do something today that I didn't do today? Yep. Uh, and that was a struggle for me. And I, and I may have held on a little bit too long, um, you know, than, than I, than I could have, or, you know, whether or not it should have, um, because I was just, I, my, I think it, part of it for me was my competitive side. Yep. Like I just did that not, ID. did not want to <laughs> see people, um, beat me. Uh, but you know, that is what it is. But I think one important thing that you said there is when you talk about developing, it's, you proactively were developing it. Like you were reading books and you were listening to podcasts and you were going to conferences and, and always focused on like on purpose, becoming a better yeah. leader, that it was something that you had inside you, but it was something that you practice and worked on over, over years right. uh, to become the leader uh, that you are today, uh, which is, is super important. I think another element of this, is this idea of it going from your head to your heart. Mm -hmm. And when you have a genuine, genuine desire to see other people succeed, um, you know, that old Jim Rohn quote, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll have everything what you, that you want. Uh, but when you have a genuine desire to help people get what they want, you know, we talk about personal responsibility so much, but it's not until you've taken that full personal responsibility that you can even start that process of moving from your head to your heart. Absolutely. Because quite frankly, like when things are difficult for you financially, you don't care about anybody else. Nope. Unapologetically, it's like, I, I got to take care of me. But once I've taken care of myself, then I can start looking at the other people that are around me and say, well, well, how can I help her succeed? How can I help him succeed? How can I help this group of people get better? And that's when it really does transition and it becomes this kind of servant leadership to where whether it their um, performance or production benefits you monetarily or not, mm -hmm. it's just about the whole group of people getting better and the high tide raising all ships and knowing that, you know, I was blessed to be able to do this at a high level. Who would I be not to share that with, with everybody else? Um, so I think it's, it's such, Wendy was such a shining example of that because of the fact that, you know, we, we do a boot camp training with our agents and she came to almost every single one of them wasn't necessarily making money off of those agents, but was always more than willing to be here and pouring into these agents uh, to make sure that they get off on the right foot um, because she knows what it was like getting off in first start, uh, getting, um, uh, beginning this career uh, and beginning any career in sales, that it's always difficult. And she was always integral in that process. And so when it came time for us to say, hey, who who do we have that would be a good fit for a leader? It was like, it was the first thought that entered anybody's brain because she already was one. Uh, and I think that that's probably key is looking at your organization and, and sh shining a light on the people that are already exhibiting these leadership qualities. And even if just a little bit, mm -hmm. again, those leadership qualities that are innate, being able to develop upon those to become great leaders within your organization. And quite frankly, it worked out so well with Wendy because she was an, an insanely high producer, but there could be someone that's like fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, like maybe in the top 50%, top 25% more than likely, but it doesn't have to be the top producer. Yep. Like it could be someone that's like number 20 out of a hundred, but they exhibit the qualities of a great leader that can manage people, which is not easy. And that person's a way better fit than just throwing the number one yeah. producer out there and thinking that that's going to make it work. For sure. It works both ways. We talk about the top producers, not necessarily, and more often than not, it's not going to be a great manager or leader, but 
you're, it's that threshold, that middle, middle of the road, oftentimes salesperson. Yeah. One, you've been in the trenches, you know what it takes, you know what it's like, you know the struggles, mm-hmm. you, 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 can, you have to be relatable. Yeah, I think that's a true. huge aspect in, uh, in moving into that yeah. position. So um, it's, it's as much, I think it's probably more, more relevant that you're going to find that middle of the pack producer um, that, mm-hmm. that could be a great leader. And, and that's, that's seen through those intangibles you're yeah. talking about. And that's, that's what organizations miss it is they're looking at that top 10%, not looking below that. Mm-hmm. And you're missing what those intangibles, you know, what's being done. Hmm. The last thing I want to touch on before we close is there's so many people that are going to be watching or listening to this that are either in this position themselves, or you're going to be someone that is in an organization where these people exist. And I think it's important to get a good understanding of once you are taken from a role where you're in sales, now transitioning into a sales leadership or sales management role, where still your personal production, your personal volume, your personal sales are still a portion of your income, a portion of your daily and weekly activities, how in the world do you now try to balance this? You've got this new responsibility of leading people, of motivating people, of coaching and training people. But then you've also got to you know, keep your production up so that your income is not affected negatively. And so what has that process been like so far for you? And what have you seen as like some of the maybe potential pitfalls or some of the things that you know, like I've got to do this, this and this, or it could be detrimental? Yeah, it's probably made me more productive just, just in general, because you're, you're, you know, the busier we get, the more mindful we are of our time. Sure. Um, and it's, it's obviously our most important, uh, and valuable commodity. So for me, it, it really has, has, it's been seamless. Um, and it's just a matter of keeping it, keeping focused yeah. on what has to be done. And, and production is still a huge part of, mm-hmm. of you know, my role here. Yeah. Um, I, I would venture to say that I, my numbers might end up being better. <laughs> um, and I just think it's, it's just sheer focus. Yeah. Um, you have to carve out the time. You know, certain things have to be done. And, and when you're dealing with other um, salespeople, You've got to make sure that they have what they need, but you can't sacrifice what what you have to be done. So you know, a lot of it is is setting um, standards, if you will, mm-hmm. on on how how we're going to communicate and and expectations with yeah. um, with them. You know, as what they can expect from me and and what I expect from them. And if uh, if we're not seeing eye to eye on that, we you know, the, you, there just has to be a ton of communication. I think yep. communication is you know, in any relationship, in any business is, is the most integral thing. And Mm -hmm. when you start playing different roles within an organization, that communication with you guys, as well as agents and, and, you know, uh, writing personal business still, uh, becomes all the more key. And and with your personal production, I can imagine that no matter what business that you're in, focusing on the basics is what works. Like that's, integral to long-term sustainability and long-term success is by sticking to the, th- the things that got you there and in always practicing and practicing and practicing the basics. And you're in a place now where you're constantly helping train on those basics mm-hmm. and being asked questions based on those basics. Yep. So there's no possible way for you to get rusty on the basics if today you're going to get a call from someone where you have to go through yep. them. So it's going to make every single step of your process and your sales uh, and, and the personal production that you're doing elevate because you're focusing all your energy on those very things that make you a great salesperson. Yeah. The spillover, it, yeah. the effect of teaching others and, and coaching it, there's definitely a spillover into your own yeah. production because you're right. It, it all goes back to fundamentals. Mm. And if you don't stay sharp on your fundamentals, and that's what happens. I think with people in an organization or in an organization, they get comfortable um, mm-hmm. And they get away from the basics. They get away from the fundamental things that led them to success. Yeah, and and it's true. when when that happens, you know, it, it's not so easy for people to always back up and punt and do it over again. Yeah. And I'm, we're forced to mm-hmm. doing this. You know, it's day to day. I mean, I've had 20 conversations today about really fundamental, foundational things uh, that will help you be successful. And you, it's really tough to have that conversation with someone if it's not what you're doing. Yeah. You know, we've addressed uh, a number of different groups of people on, on this, um, episode. And I think there's one last one that I want to address, uh, and then we'll close. And that is the person that right now is in a position where they're trying to figure out if sales leadership or sales management is the right fit for them. 
And I know before you stepped into this role, there were a lot of different conversations and you took a lot of time to figure out, is this the best fit for me? Not, am I a good fit for the position, but is the position a good fit for me in my life? And so what would you tell that person that's, that's going through that process right now of saying, hey, I've, I've been doing well in sales, uh, an opportunity looks like it's you know, there present or could be on the horizon. How does that person make that decision ultimately if they want to take that leap? You know, I think it's um, it's ultimately it's got to be about what's going to make you happy. Yeah. And and sure. I think people see a shiny object sometimes. They see that it, it you know I, I don't consider this this transition a promotion. This has been a transition into a new role and mm -hmm. something that I, I thought was was a good fit for me. And I took time to evaluate it because I wanted to make sure that I would be happy doing that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where people. They get hung up on it, it, it's a promotion or it sounds better mm -hmm. and there's this shiny object in front of them and True. they leap without really thinking about, hey, I like my job. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really, I'm, a, I'm an, an incredible salesperson and I'm, I'm crushing it in this organization yeah. and wanting something and, and not realizing it may not be something that you want. Yeah. So just, you know, be true to, to, to what, you, what you enjoy doing. Um, be true to, you know, is it, is it a good fit? You know, your family should be involved in that decision. Yep. Uh, making sure that, that everybody, you know, understands what it's going to take, uh, in that new role. Cause it's, there's going to be some sacrifices yeah, typically. Absolutely. So, um, just, just be certain that, that you're taking the leap for the right reasons. And I love that you use that line and, and I'll say it in a little bit different way, but it's so important not to get what you wanted and realize you didn't want what you got, Absolutely. Um, which is so, so, so important. And so the last thing I'll say is for the person that's listening to this, um, that is trying to figure out whether or not, you know, leadership, um, sales management is the right fit for them. Um, you need to do some digging into who you are, uh, who you are at your very, very core and, and start, start expressing those leadership attributes, start becoming a leader before you become a leader. Um, start doing leadership activities, start serving others, start giving of your time. And I promise you those leadership opportunities will come. Um, it's just the way the world works. And so guys, with that, incredibly excited to have uh, Wendy on today. It's a, such valuable information. I think really, really tactical because I know someone's listening to this right now that's going to be in one of those positions that we talked about, and this is going to really, really help them through that process. Uh, so with that, this is episode uh, 112 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Wendy Dieterlin. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow.